Hello, and welcome to another Core Animator tutorial. In this video, we'll be exploring the use of dynamic content inside of animated views. We'll use data that changes at runtime within the context of animations that have been created in Core Animator. First, let's take a look at the finished product, and then we'll walk through the steps that we took to get there. We came up with this little project that displays a handful of players' basketball stats across a few teams. As we switch between the teams, we perform a fun animation to bring some interest to the content. We've taken advantage of the simplicity of Core Animator to create several animations that we can choose from. Now let's take a look at the Core Animator project. Here in Setup you can see that we have our eight views void of any content. These can serve as either placeholders or as containers, and we'll demonstrate how that works in just a few moments. And here are our animations. Each one consists of a pair of entrance and exit animations. We've already exported our project and included it in our Xcode project, so let's take a look at that. Here's our main storyboard. As you can see, we've added our core animator view to our view controller, a tab bar for selecting teams, and a bar button for selecting the animations. Now let's take a look at some of the data that makes up our content. Here we can see our team class. It contains a team color, a group of players, and an init method, and then I've set up some mock data here. If this app were real, you could imagine this information coming from a web service or something like that. And here is our player class, which contains all the information that we need in order to render our little scorecards. In order to render those scorecards, I've created a little stats view. This is what's going to get added to our core animator view and then populated dynamically with data. And here's the code behind file for the stats view. We have outlets for each one of our fields. When the team color changes, we update the background view to the correct color, and when the player changes, we update our labels. Because we have several animations, I've created an animator protocol and classes that implement that protocol. Each class simply implements a function to transition the card view from one state to another. It takes a closure to load the data between the exit and the entrance animations. Finally, we have our view controller which pulls all of these things together. Here we have outlets for our core animator cards view and our bar button item. We have an alert controller for selecting our animations. We also keep track of our player cards in an array of stat views and we hold on to our current animator. Previously, I mentioned that our core animator views can act as either placeholders or containers for our own dynamic content. Let's take a look at that now. The cells within our core animator project were named cell 0 through cell 7, so we're going to iterate through those numbers, and for each core animator view, we're going to create a new stats view which holds our dynamic content, set its team color and its player, and then add that to our array. Now we need a small understanding of how the core animator views are laid out. The canvas acts as a super view of all the views that are inside of it, and then each one of our cards ends up being a sibling within that view. So there are basically two ways that we can handle adding our dynamic content to our core animator view. If we want to use our core animator views as containers, then we can simply add our own view, the stats view, as a subview to the cell. If we want to use our core animator view as a placeholder view, there's a little more work for us to do. First, we set our custom views frame to the frame of the cell. Then we add our custom view to the cell's super view and remove the cell from its super view. Finally, the Core Animator Cards view has a Views by Name dictionary that keeps track of all the views in the hierarchy. We need to replace the Core Animator view with our own custom view in that dictionary. You can use either of these two methods based on your preference and the needs of your project. 
Moving on, we can see the function for switching between our teams. We call our animator's function transition cards to view and hand it the closure for updating the data. Finally, we set up our action sheet for selecting our animation. This consists of setting the title of our button and the animator that we want to use for animating the content. And that's it for this core animator demo. We hope this has sparked some great ideas for how you can use animations in your own projects. Good luck and happy coding.